Hey, welcome back everybody. I want to do another video and I think um, I'm going to use a certain format. I think at the beginning I'll do my best to give you uh, updates on projects and in the middle part, the main meat of it, uh, you know, if I'm tuning, I'm tuning, if I'm doing some mechanical stuff, if I'm answering questions, whatever in the middle, and then towards the end, uh, I'll give you updates on what I'm seeing in the market with with parts and pricing, new fads and trends, or anything else that I, I find interesting uh, that I wanted to share. So the first part, we give you updates on the shop uh, from last week. We got another car in. This is Jose's car. Uh, he has bent valves, so we're gonna stock Evo 9. Um, so we're gonna basically remove the head, build the head maybe upgrade the turbo and give them a nice little tune um, and then we got this car in the Supra this is MK3 with a native 1J uh, native turbo this is an NA to converted so he's uh, looking for some power like mid 700s and then we're doing coil system for him because these are shit. We're doing IGN ones. And this is tuned on ECU master. Uh, we got a couple of stuff to clear out. Then we'll get started on that. And the trailblazer. We're almost done. I think it's going to be done. Well, the turbo kit uh, is going to be done either today or by Monday. Let me just show you. This is a 88 millimeter and a Huron kit. The rest of it is over there. But this is like the hardest part to put on this part. There's some fabbing to do because this turbo doesn't fit here correctly. So we have to cut some of this out. Um, and then we got to weld the, the tabs for this on here. And then route the intercooler pipe by cutting the, some pieces off. I really like this kind of V-band. You see, it's not like two uh, lips mating. It's like an exhaust and the clamp goes here. And I think this uh, will work very well. Uh, that is four inch or five inch exhaust, not sure. But uh, yeah, it, it looks like a good kit. I'm very excited for this. So today, uh, we're not really dyno tuning because our lip broke again One of the reels just snapped one of the pulleys So we're gonna try to get the ramp on and basically Not stop tuning But I wanted to address so here's it just stuck like that So we got some jacks and whatnot. We're gonna make it level then uh put it so where we can ramp up cars and lock it in and we'll go that way but today i wanted to do because i got some requests um the same thing as i did before with 500 horsepower um what we need for evo eights and nines okay a couple of things about evo eights and nines the it's an awesome engine obviously the it's iron block you don't really need to do anything to the block for you know upwards of 1400 or whatever but uh, the head isn't as good as evo 10s so, so to get to the stock internal limit which everybody accepts to be around 400 to 425 or 450 torque which equates to around 500 to 550 horsepower depending on your turbo size um, to reach that there's a few things that you got to do it's a must do for these cars uh, cylinder head you have to have cams a lot of people will say yeah if you get a big enough turbo yes you could but that defeats the purpose right because you're going to be so laggy on the street and you know you're only making 500 not really you know using the full potential that it possibly could so i'm going to give you my uh best uh, setup my best uh, well favorite okay and we have a few options on this that that's a, I think a little bit more than we do on the Evo 10s 
So a couple of prerequisites. Got to have an intercooler, upper intercooler pipe, blow out valve. Obviously, we're doing speed density, um, boost controller, and fuel that you need for your power, which in my case, since we're doing it on E85, FIC 1200 cc's or ID 1300s uh, and a single Walboro 320, I'm sorry, uh, 450 or AEM or Air Motive 320 will do. Okay, cams wise, on Evo 9s, I recommend the GSCS 2s with springs and retainers. On the Evo 8s and 9s that don't have the MyVec, uh, I would definitely recommend the Kelfords. Now, Kelfords will make custom grinds for you. Um, I would look into that. So if 272s are not doing it for you, you can definitely go with bigger. Let me, uh, this is an Evo 8, which doesn't have a stand. But yeah, on Evo 8s, I would definitely recommend Kelford. You could go with S2s as well. Uh, but I wouldn't do Kelfords on the Evo 9s. I'll uh, address that at a later day why. But cam springs, uh, retainers, do the timing service, uh, and you're good. Now, let's talk turbo kits and turbo power adder options. My favorite is FP Black, okay? And the reason is it just fits, it's a good turbo, uh, even if it's ball bearing, it's even better. Um, it's cheap enough, but there are other options. You could, if keeping the stock location, you could go with Blotch uh, or Block, whatever that company is. I don't know how to pronounce it properly. The 3.0 or the 2.0 will get you there. Um, EF Turbos will get you there. Even uh, a Turbo Kit, if you get like a T3, T4, whatever you want to do, Turbo Kits. But I personally do not like the stock location GTX Garrett series. For some reason, the, the manifold and the hot side of that turbo really makes it very unresponsive until it gets into boost and it builds like high pressure as well afterwards. So if you're gonna run like a GTX series turbo, I would get the kit. I would get like a T3 or whatnot. Um, so once you got that, you will be able to achieve the 500, okay, or 500 plus. You can also go with precision. Uh, obviously, they require kits. Uh, you would do, you know, like a 62, 62, or a 58, 58, whatever. They both will get you there. Um, anything larger than that, you know, obviously. So that is how you get to 500 horsepower. Obviously, clutch, I forgot clutch um, on Evo 8s and 9s. Now, as far as I wanted to do the second section, which is answering some questions that I've been, I've been getting and addressing, I guess, some... I've been trying to avoid, I guess, talking about this. Uh, it's not that serious, I'm just being dramatic, but it's really, really important that you get advice I mean, I'm here, I'll give you advice, my opinion, but it's really important that you get advice from the person that's going to tune you as far as injector selection and whatever. And the reason why you're doing that is because it's, they're gonna be dealing with it, right? So I like FIC, I like IDs, I like Siemens Decas, um, there's a bunch of injectors that I use. The person you're getting tuned by might not like that, right? And understood they tune a certain platform or their experience. Everything we do is based on our experience. So I would personally ask them, I'm here if you want advice, I'll give it to you. But as far as being real, uh, you should definitely ask the tuner that's going to tune you for especially injector selection. There's a whole slew of tuning uh, steps that we have to do to get those dialed in correctly. So if they're comfortable with certain brands or whatever, just do that. Um, second thing is, I get asked a lot, how much power do you think I'll make? Well, you would just Google that, right? If, if the uh, manufacturer is saying, that, hey, this turbo setup 
is you know good for this uh, 500 horsepower you would want want to take that with a grain of salt but that's your starting point you know that on paper it flows enough for 500 and then it's your setup so number one thing that controls uh, power is, is the power adder right that's what it's called that's why it's called power adder so you would do your research first uh, on how to pick whatever but again go back to your tuner because he's tuned 500 horsepower or whatever and they'll recommend uh, based on their experience for how you get there but if you're gonna ask me I'm gonna take a few I'm gonna think a few things one how easy is to make that power okay I don't want complications uh, I'm thinking like a shop, so how easy is going to be for you to live with it, okay? So those are my uh, main, I would say, uh, motivation, main uh, filters that I use to recommend stuff. Other people might not do that, right? So really based on who you like and what it is. So if you're going to ask me, that's what I'm going to tell you. As far as turbos and everything, I love Garrett's. I really am liking the new Zonas. Um, I am slowly pushing away from precision. It's because you know they make power. You get a good package. They don't last as long. Um, I also feel Garrett uh, Precision has a lot of varieties compared to Garrett. A lot of in between sizes, which is great. But I've been having issues with them, so I try to stay away from it. And they're not cheap. <laughs> That's the other thing. They're not cheap, so, you know, might as well go with something that's, you know, reliable and proven. Um, some some stuff uh, that I've noticed uh, recently is parts scarcity. For whatever reason, I don't know, because of our economy or whatever, a lot of the certain, well, not a lot, of, certain parts is hard to come by. People are, even the vendors are having issues getting them. So just be mindful of um, things like that. It is the world that affects our community. Um, and the other question that I've been getting, how do I tune? Where do you start to get, you know, start to learn how to tune? So my story is different. I am uh, a hands-on kind of person. And when I started it, there was no online. There was no internet. Uh, there was, you know, when I was growing up, there was no internet and we were interested in cards. You had to learn from someone or, you know, learning by books and things like that. And even then, that was like, luckily, I've worked for shops. I've had my cars uh, from the age of 18 to, I would say, 30. I am 40 now. I've owned like 38 cars. And anything I want to learn, I just go out and buy like a messed up version of it and I dig into it. And that's how I started tuning wise um i gotta say you know i was in the the american market uh i forgot the guy's name but he goes by ecu flash that's one word um big al he inspired me to kind of get into tuning in a long time ago and even then when i was inspired i had a lot a lot of things going in my life i didn't do it immediately but he con he convinced me to convert to um, sport in uh, imports. Um, so before that, I was doing you know I am knowledgeable about carbureted vehicles, which were easy to tune. Um, then you know Pro e EFI came out, throttle body uh, injectors and things like that that was harder to tune. We didn't know anything, and then you know uh, people in the industry, the big OGs, developed. Um, a lot of ways and I learned from local shops other people just messing stuff up on my own so my story is different now if you're learning and this is what I would tell you there are really really good courses online you could just google it and I think the top two that I get when I google it is uh, Evans and the other one is HP Academy it's worth the money if you're in the American cars if you want to learn about HP tuners um, definitely you can go with EFI 101 or some I forgot what it's what it's called but there it's it's classes by HP and it's a little expensive but it's worth it um, that's a starting point but you're gonna have to put in hours into it trying things this that and you know it does definitely help taking a course you can go back into them revisit it but 
I gotta say, Evo open source is not probably not a good place to start learning. Um, the learning curve on those is very steep. I mean, if we learn 30%, if you retain 30% of everything that you learn, um, this this is more like 10%. Because there's a lot of, this is an open source. It's developed by somebody else for free. And then you gotta just, just re getting the tables to read properly uh, and nothing is labeled, uh, well, nothing is labeled to a you know, where a novice would just be able to see what's what. But the professional uh, software that you actually pay for, Hondata, uh, uh, HP Tuner, Cobb, they all have description of tables um, and kind of you could start doing bass tunes on little things like that, like, you know, stock car, just adjustments here and there. And it's the number of cars, a sheer that's that's on that's basically what it controls yes you your intelligence and your devotion to it but it, it's not rocket science anyone can do it i feel anyone with iq of near 90 or 100 can do it but um it's all about the devotion if you put five hours a day into it that's what it's going to reflect if you put five minutes a week that's what it's going to look like like playing a guitar playing a car uh, playing a musical instrument it's all about the number of hours that you put in. It's literally your ass in a seat. Um, and then experimenting. So that's what I will... I've been asked actually to do uh, courses, but I don't think I will do it at this time. I might, maybe in a year or so. Um, but it's just, I just have too much on my, on my plate. Again, uh, information is all the same it's different angles right more than one way to skin a cat i might use one term i might put one step before another but all tuners basically use the same strategy i feel uh there's no way around it because that's how the software works you just call it something different you just do one thing before another versus another person but there it's typically all the same uh, just be aware of people who just you know, like reading stuff on online, people who just start to learn a little bit and they give you, hey, this is the way this works and it really is not the way the, the reasoning for that is incorrect. So if you dig deep, deep enough, somebody will always correct other people. Um, but as far as that goes, that's what I wanted to say about that. It's pretty important. If you are, if you tune five cars, please don't charge people because that's not fair. Um, your friends and family, that's something different, but if you're, because this adds, I think, mistrust, right? Like car salesmen. We all dislike and mistrust car salesmen. And I think I found a culture where people are feeling the same way about tuners. Definitely about shops, but tuners. It's because there's a lot of tuners I see who is not as experienced and I hear stories I see online and they pretend they are. and you know you have one bad experience you move to another they have another bad experience and you expect that's the way the tuning world is that is not the case um without saying much i just want to bring that up but anyway um that's it for today uh once we get the dyno stuff fixed we'll have more dyno videos we got a bunch of cars that i didn't even i need to get to uh, very interesting setups um so we'll keep in touch well we will keep you i will keep you updated um, thank you again and thanks for tuning thanks for tuning in thanks for watching thanks for subscribing keep the questions coming I'm actually gonna do a segment um, or a whole show where I'm literally going down the list and I'm answering on questions and things like that so uh, thank you guys and be very kind to each other we need it